Good afternoon and welcome to Our Lady of Grace. Please join us singing our opening hymn, Amazing Grace. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we gather to celebrate this fourth Sunday of Lent, we do so with an awareness that it has been a painful week. Pains that we now bring to the altar of the Lord. The pain of disease, the pain of isolation, the pain of struggling for jobs in our economy, the struggle to find a cure. So let us bring our prayer and praise to the Lord this night and seek his merciful love. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is here before me. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, 
The Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint this one, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. 
Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory, glory to you, you o lord. lord as jesus passed by he saw a man blind from birth he spat on the ground and he made clay with his saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said it is, but others said, no, he just looks like him. He said, I am. They brought the one who once was blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, So what do you have to say about him, since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir? that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him. The one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord. And he worshipped him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. If you are watching this live streamed mass, you have intentionally chosen to do so. And I'm going to believe that you are doing so in the hope to connect with our God, to connect with his word, with his mass, with his people, and even with his sacrament, even though virtually in spiritual communion. And as I celebrate this Mass, which is certainly a novelty for me and for all participating, 
I keep imagining the people, parishioners, and guests that I would normally see in this church on a Saturday afternoon at four o'clock and so often take for granted. And that is no longer the case, taking that presence for granted. But I imagine not only here at 4 p.m. Mass, but also at 8 o'clock in the morning and 10.30 in the morning on Sunday here at Our Lady of Grace, or at 5.30 on Saturday evening at St. Benedict, or at 9.30 at St. Benedict, our partner parish. But we are gathered in spirit, my brothers and sisters, to sustain our faith and to deepen and renew our faith in the power of God through our celebration of Mass. Joining with me in this celebration is Father Marlin, our, our, our parochial vicar. He's representing not only himself and community, but primarily also those to whom he regularly ministers, the homebound, the sick, those who are in hospitals and in institutions. So his presence here is a, mind, a, a reminder to all of us to keep them in prayer. Uh, Mr. Lacasio is here serving the Mass, and he too is representing the, really the entire community of St. Benedict in his uh, seeking to serve as the church as a deacon in a, a few uh, months. Uh, he is praying not only for himself and his family, I'm sure, but we challenge him as a symbol of our parish community at St. Benedict. Also, as uh, our interpreter, Amy Ahern, is here, uh, representing that community as well. To know that as a community of faith, we are small communities of a larger community. Also, Marisa, as she is playing the organ and cantering this night, she's not only parting, uh, enhancing our celebration by the music and praise, but also the members of our music ministry who say, so faithfully serve but cannot physically be here. And also she serves so faithfully in our parish life commission, so many groups and organizations that sustain the life of our parishes, as well as Katrina, as she is here serving in the role of elector, uh, bringing to, with her her prayers, but also the prayers for the youth and the uh, young adults, as well as to the adults whom she so faithfully serves by forming and uh, challenging to all of us to become evangelists taking the good news to the world. And so as we gather this night, just ask all of us to take a moment of prayer, asking the Holy Spirit to call to mind those we normally see when we assemble for Mass. Take the time to reflect on your normal arrival at church, who you normally see at the doors, going to your pew, in your pew, in front of you, or behind you. The ministers, greeters, ushers, cantors, altar servers, Eucharistic ministers, take in their face, their name, their smile, their personality, their quirks, their life, precious, that we do not any longer wish to take for granted as we hold one another in our thoughts, we continue to use God's gift of imagination that you are here because we believe by God's spirit, you are here. We are filling this church, this sacred space, our community, our communities with praise of God. We can feel your presence because it is Christ's spirit and hopefully and prayerfully, the Spirit will allow you to experience our presence. Thank you for reaching out through social media, the medium that seemingly was so far advanced, but a couple months ago when we asked parishioners to sign up for flock note, it seemed, why would we be doing that? What a prophetic action. Now it at least enables us to reach out to you with information and news and spiritual uh, life to keep us together as a family. So let us draw hope and strength and comfort from the Lord as we do what he asked us to do in remembrance of him. His word tonight from that book of Samuel, the anointing of David, that was an interesting time for not only the prophet Samuel but for 
the people of Israel because the first king, Saul, had disobeyed the Lord. He had fallen as king away from God. Samuel knew that he needed to find another leader for his people. He was a time of mourning, and God comes to him and says, Samuel, stop grieving for the past. Look to the future. I will tell you and point to you a new king that will shepherd my people. And he visits that town, that village of Bethlehem, to come upon Jesse, the father of eight sons. Seven he presents to Samuel, assuming that one of them would be the one to be king. As he comes, starting with Eliab, the oldest, the natural choice, Samuel tells Jesse and Eliab, this is not the one. And he proceeds to go through each of the other seven sons who are there. A time of hopelessness saying, no, the Lord's voice through the prophet, he is choosing none of them. And Samuel goes to Jesse one more time saying, are these all of your sons? And Jesse says, I do have one other, David, the youngest. He's out tending the sheep. Call for him, Jesse. And as he is presented to the prophet, the Lord tells Samuel, this is my anointed one. I choose him. This reading is certainly so known and familiar to us, the choosing of the least, the least likely. But we also see in it, as we experience this time of confusion, the order that we usually live our life has been disrupted, just as the order of Jesse's sons was turned upside down. As we heard in that first reading, God sees the human heart. So often with our human eyes, we only perceive what we can see. And God's word tonight is reminding us during these times to listen with our heart. So important for David's formation was spending time alone with those sheep, tending to their needs. And as he did this, God was training him, strengthening him, and giving him the wisdom and strength to rise up to become the greatest king of his people. What I am now seeing is an empty church, except for a couple I've mentioned, but that's enough. God provides. You can hear my voice on a screen or see me through a screen, but you did not come to see me or to see any others. You've come to see the mysterious presence of the Lord, celebrated in the sacred mysteries of the holy sacrifice of Mass. This is a time that we allow God's Spirit to fill our souls, to anoint us as he anointed David as a king, to anoint us with gifts of the Spirit that allow us to perceive the heart. As Paul teaches us tonight that we are to be children of the light, light that produces every kind of goodness, righteousness, and truth. I have been touched, I have been amazed this past week by the periodic interruptions that I get by text messages, emails, or phone calls from parishioners, from distant friends, from relatives who I haven't seen, reaching out, expressing concern, support, and assurance of prayers. Receiving light is receiving hope. That is the power of God's Holy Spirit that illumines our minds, our hearts, and souls to deal with this current crisis. The good news tonight, the gospel, is the passage of Jesus healing the man blind from birth. Perhaps we should say that we have been blind from birth, having experienced what we are experiencing this past week. 
we are being challenged by this crisis to see things with a new sight, the sight of God's love that calls us together. They are dark times, quiet, isolation, being alone, disconnected, fear, loneliness, darkness, blindness, blindness that only Christ can heal. My brothers and sisters, we are truly blessed to gather, to stay connected. I would just like to point out two aspects of the gospel, two verses that I believe we can take with us throughout this coming week. The notion that the Pharisees threw him out. The blind man was thrown out by the Pharisees. But what did the Son of Man do? He went and found him. That is our mission, to find those who are in darkness, in need of a spark of hope, a spark of light. The other part of tonight's gospel, as it is brought to a close, Jesus uses the phrase, you have seen him, the one speaking with you is he. The word with. Jesus isn't speaking to the man, but he was speaking with the man whom he had cured. That is the essence of community. That is the essence of staying connected, speaking with one another, journeying with one another through this darkness. May the sacrament of Eucharist we share at this altar flood our souls with the power of his healing love that brings all of us hope. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As the Father sent his Son into this world to heal us, to redeem us, and to bring us hope, we now ask him to hear and answer these prayers we offer up today that we may be consoled and comforted by his grace. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, may the Lord look graciously upon his every need 
and continue to inspire him in holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For our priests, as they continue to minister to the church, may the Lord be a guiding and protective presence with them as they bring the consolation, hope, and healing of the word of God to the community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our national and local leaders, may the Lord grant them fortitude to remain steadfast as they work together towards helping and protecting their communities, especially the weak and the vulnerable. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers that continue to work with courage of heart and strength of mind and body. May they know our deep gratitude for all they are doing to heal and help the afflicted. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those infected with or recovering from the coronavirus, and for those who have lost loved ones from this disease, may Jesus, the Good Shepherd, offer them hope and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our dearly departed, including Joseph and Josephine Nelevanko. Mary E. Novotny. David Graham. Richard Dominic. May they rest in eternal peace and happiness with all the angels and saints in heaven let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parishioners of Our Lady of Grace and St. Benedict churches, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those prayers we hold deep within our hearts, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We draw our prayers of petition to a close by offering the prayer to Our Lady of Guadalupe. Holy Virgin of Guadalupe, Queen of the Angels and Mother of the Americas, we fly to you today as your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us with your Son, as you did at the wedding in Cana. Pray for us, loving mother, and gain for our nation and world, and for all our families and loved ones, the protection of your holy angels, that we may spare the worst of this illness. For those already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful, wipe away their tears and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, teach all of us in your church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence, knowing that you truly are our compassionate mother, health of the sick and cause of our joy. Shelter us under the mantle of your protection. Keep us in the embrace of your arms. Help us always to know the love of your Son, Jesus. Amen.
Pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and, and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created, rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, 
we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, our Lady of Grace, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on us constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Edward our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, a merciful Father, gather to yourself, or your children is scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. For Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And your spirit.
his soul shall be healed. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit, spirit, bow down for the blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace.
Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.